A postal code can tell you a lot about how the pandemic has impacted someone. Just knowing the first three digits can likely tell you if they've been able to work from home, had timely access to a vaccine, and their likelihood of getting sick with COVID-19. Certain postal codes, known as hotspots, can be found across the country. Living and working there are essential workers, and workplaces where transmission is a looming fear. He loves his camera. It's him and his, his son. Amanda Young Colucci's brother, Godfrey Young, was a longtime employee at Canada Post. An immigrant from Hong Kong, he always worked hard to support his family. He's a very honest person. Um, you know, he loves his family. He loves his parents. Just two more years, and then you know, he can, he can finally, you know, retire. Take a break, be with his kids. That's right, be, with, uh, his be with his family, and then you know, um, not in a million years I would have ever thought that COVID nineteen would hit so close. Yo, to my family. In mid-January, Godfrey Young showed up for his night shift at the Canada Post Gateway facility in Mississauga. The sprawling facility is the largest in the country. Thousands of people work here, hundreds at a time in close quarters. The facility was experiencing an active COVID outbreak and there were close to 280 positive cases. Days after his shift, the 62-year-old tested positive for COVID-19. Six days later, he died. Since then, like, you know, I've been asking that question. What happened? Like, how? Canada Post has had more than one outbreak during the pandemic at this facility. The company declined Global News' request for an interview and said in a statement that it has implemented rigorous safety measures to keep employees safe and has closely followed advice of public health officials including distancing and screening of employees. It says it is also conducting mandatory rapid on-site testing at many facilities, including Gateway, offering paid sick leave and recently held vaccination clinics. Amanda, who's also a city councillor in Markham, says it's not enough. Essential worker like him have to take that type of risk every day. The question is, who's there to protect them? More deadly and contagious variants have stricken workplaces in the third wave of the pandemic, as warehouses, manufacturing, and food processing plants continue to be significant drivers of transmission. In Ontario alone, 68 people have died from COVID that they got at work, and more than 25,000 contracted it on the job. But advocates say that number could be even higher because not all cases have been reported. Every single case, every single death, there's someone who we love, our friends, our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters, our parents, or someone's child. These are not just numbers. Dina Ladd is the founder and executive director of the Workers' Action Center an organization that supports workers and advocates for changes to labor laws to improve wages and working conditions. We've seen worker after worker calling our hotlines, um, you know, calling us and saying, what, what do I do? Um, you know, everyone's lost their job in my family. I have to do this work, uh, but how do I protect myself? Even before the pandemic started, some workers in Ontario had paid sick days, scheduling rights, and a wage increase taken away. So that context was very much on our minds when the pandemic started because we were thinking, oh my goodness, they're forced to go to work and we know it, it's, it's gonna be brutal. And it's not just Ontario. Canada's labor market has undergone a radical transformation in the last few decades there has been a massive shift towards precarious work and increasing use of temp agencies and subcontracting, leaving workers with fewer benefits and less job security. A recent study found that 58% of Canadian workers did not have paid sick leave from their employer. And all of those issues 
create a very unstable feeling, create a real sense of fear, um, a real sense that you can't really speak up because your job is on the line. So labor rights are really a provincial responsibility and they've taken a hands-off approach and said, you know, go ahead. We're not going to regulate, we're not going to intervene. For the past decade, Hong has been working at an industrial laundry facility, unloading and unpacking bags of dirty linens and garments. He makes less than $15 an hour, and up until recently, had no paid sick days. Global News agreed to hide his identity as he fears reprisal from his employer. On New Year's Day, Hong went to work and, as usual, had lunch with a longtime colleague and friend. His colleague died in hospital a few weeks later, just one month before he was to retire. Hong says the factory requires them to wear a mask while they're working because it's impossible to distance on the line. When he returned to work, extreme fatigue and swollen legs made it painful to stand for his 10-hour shift but he needed the money. Months later, Hong says he's still suffering long-haul symptoms of COVID-19 and is too weak to work. Do you feel this all could have been prevented? Hello. Good, how are you? Dr. Andrew Bazari is an expert in social medicine. He also leads a team of researchers who have been studying hotspots in Toronto and Peel. One of the things we wanted to do was dive deeper into what has been driving the heat and the unequal exposure of COVID. They found that 63% of people who live in hotspots are racialized and more likely to be essential workers in manufacturing, utilities, trades, and transport. They're also more likely to be low-income earners. And what we've really found is that postal code is code language for the structural determinants of health and these health disparities that have long been in place. Bazari says the data is a wake-up call, that essential workers in these neighborhoods need urgent protection at work and vaccine access. Because if people were going to stand up and say, you know, these people are heroes, which I fully endorse, we have to make sure that we're doing the work and we're providing the policies and supports that is more than rhetoric. Not having paid sick leave meant workers often couldn't stay home if they felt unwell. After mounting pressure, Ontario mandated three paid sick days, but the policy is temporary. So labor laws haven't changed to protect workers. And I think that, you know, when you go to work, you need to feel confident that the laws that are there to protect you are not just words on a paper. But what we've seen is um, enforcement is not happening. Many also argue that provincial governments were slow to act and enforce rules. And despite new research suggesting that COVID spreads primarily through airborne transmission, experts say infection control measures do not focus enough on improving ventilation. But it's not just up to governments. The corn continues along this rinsing platform. Nature's Path is a family-run organic food manufacturer in Metro Vancouver. These lines run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Arjun Stevens is the general manager. 
So we included these plexiglass, and then soon thereafter, we increased the conveyor, so there's more space between the people. At the beginning of the pandemic, people were scared to come into work, um, and we said, well, what can we do to alleviate that concern and make sure people are safe? So we talked to uh, consultants, we talked to experts. That led to changes. Plexiglass, distancing on lines, and screening. The company also decided to offer a now permanent hero pay raise of $2 an hour and increase paid sick leave by two weeks at its facilities in Canada and the U.S. It also decided to focus additional efforts on an area of transmission concern, the lunchroom, making it the first in North America to install these specialized UV lights and air filtration system. Because we know that when people have to take off their mask when they're sitting down in a lunchroom, that that's also when they're vulnerable. The changes at all four locations cost the company close to $4 million US, but they say it's been worth it. At the BC facility, there has been no workplace transmission. And we feel that if we look after our team members, eventually, you know, the profits will come. I mean, a lot of companies where people don't have this, they'll come to work sick because they don't have another option. And for those advocating for change, that is key. Recognition that the work these people do is essential every day, pandemic or not. The, the one silver lining from this pandemic, if there could be ever a, such a, a lining, is, is the fact that there has been a lot more exposure on these invisible types of work. That public consciousness, that awareness of the fact that, you know, we need to be concerned about the conditions of the cashier at the grocery store because if she's not well, then that affects my health. We have to do this work. We have no choice.